Hi, welcome back to Electronic Structure and Bonding in Inorganic Chemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so I want you to look over here on the far left. All right, so I have a metal here designated by M. It has a ligand attached to it that has two donor atoms. This, this ligand, as you might recognize, this is ethylene ethylene diamine. Sometimes you'll see it abbreviated in parentheses as EN. All right, ethylene diamine has a property that, um, there, and there's many, there's many different ligands that have this, it has the property called bidenticity, and we usually call it bidentate. It's a bidentate ligand. Denticity is the, mm. is the property of ligands by which they have multiple atoms to which donate electron density to a metal. Okay, in this case, there's two atoms that have this ability. All right, the two atoms are this nitrogen right there and this nitrogen right there. Both of those atoms have the capacity to donate electron density to the metal. And that makes this ligand, ethylene diamine, bidentate. All right, the topic of this video and I'm not going to take too long on this because it's a relatively, relatively simple topic. It's called the chelate effect. The chelate effect is an increase in stability for a complex when you have the metal bound by a ligand that has multiple, um, multiple sites of electron donation. Clearly, this ethylene diamine has that. Okay. In other words, what I'm saying is this complex right here, if this was all there was to the complex, it is more stable than if I had the metal simply bound to, to two ammonias, all right? This complex down here is significantly less stable than this, all right? And the increased stability of having both of those donor atoms come from the same ligand, a bidentate ligand, is called the chelate effect. All right, there are even some ligands that have even higher degrees of denticity. An example of that is EDTA. So what is EDTA? Well, EDTA looks like this. Let me finish drawing this. It does take a minute to draw. And if some of you have taken any kind of biochemistry course or any kind of biology lab, you've probably used EDTA whether you realize it or not. This is EDTA. It stands for ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. EDTA. Usually it's abbreviated in lowercase when you're talking about it in terms of a complex in the naming. All right. It's tetradentate. It has four carboxylates that can bind a metal. And in fact, this is used in a lot of uh, different uh, applications in biochemistry and genetics when you're trying to inhibit bacteria. EDTA, these four charges, negative charges, can bind certain ions and prevent the bacteria from using them. In other words, it has a bacteriostatic effect. Okay? In fact, a lot of energy drinks use EDTA. There's EDTA in a lot of foods because it picks up um, ions so that bacteria can't use them and increases the shelf life. Okay? And if all four of these carboxylates were to bind one metal, the same metal, it would be classified as chelate effect. It would be even probably more stable than this complex up here. So what's the added effect of the chelate effect? What does it mean? Well, there's always a probability that one of these nitrogens from ethylene diamine will dissociate from the metal, as shown in this state right here. There's always a probability of that. But there's also a greater probability that if it dissociates, it will reassociate back to where you'll end up back in the initial state like this. All right, so the chelate effect does several things. Number one, because there's added stability from multiple sites of interaction from one ligand, all right, it, it basically makes it less likely for one of the donor atoms to dissociate. It's also, the chelate effect makes it very unlikely that all the donor atoms will dissociate at the same time, all right? One of those atoms might dissociate but both of them are probably not going to dissociate at the same time. The only way the ligand can fully dissociate from that metal is if they both dissociate at the same time, and that's very unlikely. 
And when one of them dissociates, it's a lot more likely for it to reassociate. All right. And this chelate effect is primarily driven by entropy. Okay. A lot of times the metal is solvated, and so whenever this, the, both of these um, donor atoms from ethylene diamine interact with the metal, you basically have water being dispersed from the metal. Its hydration sphere is eliminated. And that is an increase in entropy that drives this reaction and or this interaction and makes it spontaneous. And so we say the chelate effect is largely driven by entropy. Okay. Technically, the state has a lower has a has a is lower entropy, but when you disperse the hydration sphere or whatever it is away from the metal, that's an overall increase in entropy that drives this interaction, and and ultimately makes it very very stable. Okay. The chelate effect has a lot of applications. There's a lot of biological applications as well. In the next video, we're going to cover something called the macrocyclic effect, which is actually a form of the chelate effect, but it is much more specific, and we'll see why um, in the next video. But just, to, just to, to summarize the chelate effect, it's a drastically stabilizing effect. When you have one ligand that can bind to the same metal with multiple donation sites, in this case, for ethylene diamine, it's these two nitrogens. If it were EDTA binding all of these ligand, all of these sites, I should say, to one ion, the sites would be these four carboxyl negative charges. Okay. And what the chelate effect does is it, it basically causes it to be relatively unlikely that one of these donor atoms will dissociate, but it makes it very likely that it will reassociate. The other thing it really does is it makes it very, very, very unlikely that all the donor atoms from that one ligand will dissociate at the same time. So in other words, chelate effect really binds that metal. Chelate is binding. Now, also in biochemistry, some enzyme active sites, let me come down here and do this. This is a practical example. Some enzyme active sites, particularly ones that bind phosphates, they have aspartate residues, all right? They have aspartate residues like this. Now technically, if this is one enzyme, these is, even though the enzyme is massive, it's a massive molecule, these aspartate residues come from the same molecule. And sometimes a magnesium ion, not a typical, it's not a transition metal, but it certainly works here, it likes to interact with these aspartate residues. Okay? An example of an enzyme that does this is DNA polymerase. We would say the magnesium is chelated by the aspartate residues. It's chelated. It's bound very tightly in there. And these magnesium ions are very difficult to remove as a result. Okay, so that's an example. And an enzyme that does that is DNA polymerase. RNA polymerase does the same thing with magnesium, but it does it additionally with zinc ions also. Another enzyme that does this with zinc is carbonic anhydrase. In fact, I have a video of that on my channel in an enzyme mechanism playlist. So go watch that if you want to see chelation in action. Okay. So in short, that's the chelate effect. In the next video, we're going to go over something called the macrocyclic effect. Make sure to join us then, like the video, and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.